grass and tobias uh, for near. Okay, this is an organic garden, a seaside, a seaside guest house. Um, it's actually a growing commune or a community zone on sustainable living, conservation, and the love for the culture of Inside um, Alpas, and this is how they serve the food. Uh, well, we can see a lot of something is sort of like this is a country, but uh, the overall ambiance in Alpas is very nice. So Complements even the food there. there. So those are the attractions in the province of the Let's move to the one. The province of Let's start with for the Manuel. So this is the ancestral 
House of course, uh, President Manuel Rojas, which is the last president of the Republic of Philippines, the first president of the Republic of the Philippines. This is a well-preserved abode that has been already declared as a national historical shrine. Now, uh, within the heritage district of Capiz, there's the Rojas Cathedral. So this is uh, a structure that crowns the downtown of Rojas City. Okay. Uh, this was a stone church, completed dating back to the 18th century. It was destroyed by typhoon, eventually rebuilt and reconstructed. Then we have the controversial Rojas Fountain. Uh, built in the early 1920s, okay. uh, this is sitting in front of the Rojas Cathedral, of course, the heart of the city plaza. Okay. It's controversial because it has been a subject of controversy for the longest time. Pinapalit palitan yung chura ng fountain, na the disregard for that in that chura, of course, for heritage advocates. Hindi kasi pwede galawin ng mga heritage. Structures. Hanggang sa binalik na naman siya, sa design niya, nilagyan ng mailaw and all. So yun, yung mga controversies ng Rojas. Then the Rojas Bridge, this is also across, just within the Heritage District of Capiz. Um, Rojas rather, so this is just sitting also uh, in front or across the city fountain. Uh, as, uh, also constructed during the early 1910. So this is Basically, a hundred-year-old bridge already connecting, um, connecting uh, uh, the city of Rojas to other parts of the region. Okay, another notable structure in the Heritage District is the Rojas Bandstand, where uh, you can see a beautifully crafted and designed bandstand, which uh, dating back to early 19th. So, within the heritage district, pa lang, wala nito na makikita structures and spots that are quite picturesque. Okay, Capiz Provincial Capital, one of the most picturesque capital in the Philippines. So, um, you can really be amazed here with the neoclassical architectural design okay, of the old structure. It was designed by, it was built by uh, American architecture. Then, Panubrion Museum. Okay, this is a fascinating museum. This is actually um, a reconstruction of an, a huge water tank okay, that was built in the early 1920s. Okay, so you can see here a lot of memorabilia, excavated artifacts, uh, memorabilia the President Manuel Rojas, traditional dresses and uh, guards of the indigenous tribes of the Moving on, Panay Church or the Santa Monica Church, including the Bell. So, this um, um, amazing church actually reveals the Spanish Grand River in Panay. It's made of stones, marble, and the like. Uh, and it's yung yeah, Panay Church. Palita Green Bell, so this is what I'll show you a lot of in the video for your uh, It's one of the main places to be in Capiz. Okay, aside from having a Santo Steve buffet during the Super Tour, Nakawa, which is the most added massage for everything that is Palita Green Bell and Echo Fire. Then there's, there's one awesome attraction in Capiz that's probably not going to mention, but if you are looking into the most path, you are adventurous. Okay. The ruins of Alcatraz. Okay. Uh, this ruins of Alcatraz, this is just in the city of Rojas, very near Alcatraz. So if you are a fan of Maze Runner, Maze Runner, Attack on Titan, Sure. So you really, uh, you definitely love this place. So this is a, this is actually a ruins of 
some sort of Alcatraz, but this is supposedly a resort, but it wasn't finished or bad. So, this structure was naturally weathered, it's not time, so it gives others uh, this ancient vibe, okay? not to mention there are boulders, there are stones near the beach. So, this is very nice spot for the ruins of Alcatraz. Then the La Playa de Rojas, which is a public park with a beach uh, seafood stalls facing by Pine Beach. Seafood if you're going to walk uh, to the whole stretch of La Playa de Rojas. Right? So those are the top attractions in Capiz. Now let's move on to this little um, island of the province of Kimaras. Here are the ruins of the, the whole structures. And the nearby Gusi Lighthouse is the Gusi Beach of Nueva Valencia. It's also one of the most famous spots here in the province. Considerably a stretch of some sort of golden yellow beach and emerald green waters. So, um, hindi to masyadong crowded compared to the 
the other one on the other side of the island. So it's very calming and relaxing in this area. Alubihod Beach, okay, and we're still in Nueva Valencia, also one of the more most famous spots here. Actually, this is the most popular beach in the entire island, public beach with a very long stretch of somewhat uh, fine creamy sand which mixed with uh, some, some red pebbles. Although this is a public beach, it's uh, interestingly clean and same goes with the uh, waters. Next, okay, there's also a wind farm in uh, Guimaras, also part of the regular tour here, that's the San Lorenzo wind farm. They will also take you to the Mango, Mango Research Center, which is actually the Na National Mango Research Development Center okay, in Jordan. Okay. Of course, Guimaras is uh, known to be one of the uh, provinces in the country to have the best results. Okay, this was shown in the video earlier, the Roca Encantada in Buena Vista. So this is one of the famous landmarks here as well. So this is uh, the summer house of the Lopez clan, okay, built on top of the hill. Although, um, um, the house looks like a modern one, if you can actually uh, uh, see it, okay. There's no parang walang bakas ng heritage dito, but this idyllic mansion is actually considered as a heritage house for the National Heritage Institute. Then there is the smallest plaza okay, in Guimaras uh, with just uh, roughly less than 300 square meters. It's uh, the smallest plaza in the Philippines. At some point, it was actually the smallest plaza in the world. It was even written in Guinness Book of World Records, but somehow it lost the appellate from uh, to an, another place, but still, it remains the smallest one. Yeah. Then we have the Navalas Church, it's the oldest Roman Catholic church and the only existing heritage church in Ireland. There's the Trappist Monastery, which is the only Trappist Monastery in the country. So, uh, for souvenir shopping, this is one of the stop. Then, of course, the famous pit stop okay, for your uh, culinary Gimaras, which is So that's Gimaras. Now, we'll be to the province of Iloilo, and that, of course, we will divide this one into the city of Iloilo and the province of Iloilo. So, for uh, the city of Iloilo, again, uh, Iloilo City is considered as one of the most preserved heritage destinations in the Philippines. For stopping the Lises Calle Real, or maybe it's the Masa, okay, Masa Street. Okay, this is a store, historic street okay, in the old downtown of the Iloilo City Okay, uh, Commonly referred as Escolta of Iloilo. This is home to Spanish era, common era influence houses, buildings, and now it serves as the shopping and entertainment district. Of course, we have the Molo Church, a okay, uh, Spanish colonial church heritage site as well. This is known to be the feminist church because of the all women and some uh, saints represented on the 16th statue, on the, the, the perk, perch on the uh, pillars of the church. Okay. It has a neo-Gothic style okay, and really one of the uh, most popular landmarks in now, interestingly, no, although this is a Catholic church, you can actually find statues of Greek gods or deities at the Molo Plaza, just in front of it, okay, uh, just across. So, uh, this is a, a nice blend of different uh, heritage, uh, faith, and culture. Then there's the Haro Cathedral, okay, one of the oldest churches in Kilo with a very colorful history as well. Uh, ito naman yung tinatawag nilang um, um, counterpart ni Molo Church. While Molo earlier is a feminist, uh, Haro Cathedral naman is the masculine one because of the all-male uh, saints um, perched onto the columns of the church. However, the church is actually dedicated to a woman. That's a Saint Elizabeth. On top. And then we have Molo Mansion. Okay, so again, Iloilo City is dotted with a lot of heritage houses, including Molo Mansion, of course, one of the famous ones. 
Then we have the Lopez Heritage House or in commonly tinatawag nilang Nelly's Garden. So according to to the locals, this is the queen of heritage houses in in Iloilo, of course. Um it represented the old grandeur of the city. There's uh how makikita dito how the elite were living before. Um the luxury, the class and all. So Lopez Heritage Mansion, then we have Lazara's Mansion as well, which is a mixture of American and Spanish architectural styles. It's one of the most beautiful heritage mansions in Italy. Then we have Casa Mariquit. Uh, this is built somewhat 200 years ago. It's also um, considered as the oldest heritage house in Italy. Then we have the Caminha Balay na Bato, or house by the river, literally. Um, this one is a very uh, it's something stands out among the heritage houses because of its unique architectural style, the architecture of Pisa, Tawagin. So this is an an ingenuity of the Filipinos during the Spanish era. Okay, so marami itong wooden columns, mga poste, wooden posts. Nung araw kasi ang ang kumbaga, kapag mas maraming poste yung bahay mas mayaman ka. So parang ang 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 basihan ng yaman ng isang tao o isang Filipino sa Pilipino during the Spanish era is kung gaano kadami yung poste ng bahay. So bilangin niyo pa yung poste ng bahay niyo. Ganun po kay kaya. Okay. Then we have the River Esplanade or simply the Esplanade in the city. So it's an Esplanade running across alongside the river. It's one of the best showcase of the effort of the city to rehabilitate and protect it. So there, it's a lifestyle hub. Then outside Iloilo, Iloilo City, okay, what's a visit to the province if you're not going to see Isla de Gigantes? No? So they say this your trip to Iloilo will be complete okay, if you're not going to try uh, Gigantes Islands. Okay? So perhaps this is the most famous and recognizable spots outside Filipino City. But uh, this is a conglomeration of different smaller islands that you can visit on a island hub. Then there is the Green Farm in San Joaquin. This is a well-photographed spot as well in Iloilo. It's a very unique site that combines recreational, religion, agriculture. This is, at some point, this is a showcase of farm and faith tourism. Philippines. So there are pilgrimage uh, areas here where you can see the biblical scenes, including Noah's Ark, the Garden of Eden, and mga life-size uh, diorama. So, um, ang pinaka-best part dito is when you pass through that dark meditation channel, and then suddenly, uh, you will be greeted with, uh, you will be greeted with that um, uh, heaven-like uh, structures. Then there is the Bukari Pine Forest, or what they call the Little Baguio of Iloilo. So if you're, if you you wanna get away from islands, if you cannot get away from the city, so here is Bukari Pine Forest. Okay, if you wanna be surrounded by pine trees and fresh mountain trees. Now Iloilo, as a heritage province, also magnificent, uh, has also. Um, Uh, has a list also of uh, amazing cemeteries. While it is kind of odd to visit cemeteries, but if you're a fan of really heritage architecture, uh, San Joaquin Cemetery is also uh, is one of the most preserved, best preserved, grandest cemetery in the entire province, founded by the uh, White Cemetery which is also hailed as one of the most artistic cemetery in the Philippines. Uh, at some point, it was even featured in the National Geographic. And moving on, we have Myagao Church, of course, uh, in Myagao. It's one of the most visually appealing age-old church in the province of Filipino. It's uh, included in the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Baroque Churches in the Philippines with very detailed uh, artistic sculptures that are adorning its facade. It's Myagawa Church. 
Now for other churches, we visit our church. Uh, we have the Poton Plaza, our Kupi, the Grandes Plaza in Ilo, better than the ones in Ilo. Uh, not only is graced by the obelisk, the food for the markers, and uh, it has the Astrodome, Astro, which is uh, crowning the area. Now, for our farm experience, they visit F. Lata Farms in. Manjaga, so Epata Farms, which is a farm tourism destination famous for the glass cap, glass cap, also listed as one of the best glass cap. It's, it's very silly, it's very peaceful in here in Epata Farms. So Epata is the whole thing in Manjaga. Uh, when I visit the F the Farms, lahat na lang na kung ano may bike on so, so that's F the Farms in. Okay. Now moving on to our last province. We need more. Okay, the province is Negros. This is one of the most recognizable landmarks of the city of Bacolod. 
Okay, and it's a trapezoidal park with a lot of trees on the periphery, gazebo on the center. Okay, so this is a center of entertainment on the earth. Days. Now, if you want to learn about the uh, contemporary artworks that tell the story about Negros, okay, uh, specifically with Negros Occidental, its main industry, the sugar industry, then head to Negros Museum. So there's a permanent exhibit here on the evolution of sugarcane in the province. Negros Museum. Then we have San Sebastian Cathedral or the Bacolod Cathedral which is also a famous religious and historical landmark in the city. Then there is the Pope John Paul II Tower. So this is a seven-story building now dedicated to, of course, to the late Pope John Paul who visited the capital um, 1980s. I think it was uh, a, a really a momentous or a festive event for the people of Bacolod at uh, that time. Now, for uh, culinary indulgence, then you may head to Manipat Country. This is a small cluster of eateries located just beside us. Now, if you want to have a grasp or closer look of the mascaras, or you see your mascara festival, then visit Giorgio Vito the Science Gala. So you can see there, there how you grab the mask. You can actually buy one. Try Outside the Polon, okay, there are numerous sites as well. Okay, starting off with the Rubens. Now, uh, commonly, in a associate or in a associate, the Rubens as part of the Polon, but geographically, it's really in Palisade. So, this is one of the beautiful, most beautiful spots as well in Negros. It is a remains or remnants of a once grand museum built with sugar bar. So, tinatawag din siyang Taj Mahal of the Philippines. Why? Because the Taj Mahal was built out of the okay. So, say, the ruins was built by the, the sugar bar out of his Okay, It was burned down during American occupation. Um, Sinunog kasi ito, kasi gusto gawin ng headquarters ng mga Jarakas. Sinunog na lang para sa mga Jarakas. Then, Mambukal Resort. Uh, uh, this is an interesting mountain resort. It's actually, this is actually managed with the rules of government. And there's uh, plenty of things that you can do here as well. You may want to explore the seven waterfalls in the resort. Boating in the lagoon or uh, um, Play with the bathing butterflies or butterflies. Okay, Malayne Grense is an ancestral house in Silay. Okay, it showcases the lifestyle of So, Kalansai, Silay, they are also heritage areas in Then, the famous Lakawun Island, okay, uh, it's just a small area, a banana shaped island. That the properties, it's lined with white sand. It's uh, also a frequented uh, island as well. Then, then um, head towards DSV or Don Salvador Benedicto. You see the one of the tallest of the And they say it's one of the most waterfalls in the world. It's in Don Salvador Benedicto. However, it's a really cha it's quite a challenge to reach the water if, not, if you are not used to high. Then we have the Balari Mangrove in Silai. It's a car it's a uh, coastal reforestation reforestation for the uh, city government. Then of course come first two hand in Talisai, this is a highland resort, very fantastic. Which is also dubbed as the destination of Negros, featuring uh, uh, adventure facilities, zip lines, sky bike, carousels, a hero's hall, shoe houses, uh, a huge playground. And also a nice uh, theme park, in, it is quite a new, okay, but it's very really interesting. Not the park, very theme park, the Magic Land in Silai. So this is the first Filipino theme-inspired temple in the Philippines. 
So this was themed after the ancient Philippine so the legend of the Bakunawa. Okay, if you prefer from the Bakunawa, this is the, the, the track that arose from the sea. So this is a unique concept, uh, art concept of its kind, and uh, only in, in Western Visayas, Visayas Okay, so that's my oh, there you go. So that ends the attraction of the number of Western Visayas. Okay, so before um okay, let me just leave the forms that we need to, to fill up before we end this one. And while filling up the forms, just make sure it's updates for so, resin wise. That's our session this morning. So I need to fill up the attendance form for the value of form. So while you're doing that, okay, most of our destinations, top destinations in the country are already opening. Okay, with Kogon and Shangao opening last December 1. Of course, with travel and service and El Nido has expanded its uh, tourism borders as well. Um, Shangao, yeah. Of course, Buraka is still open. I, uh, uh, there's a little bit in the news for Buraka because uh, they, will be, they will be shifting to antigen testing. However, they um, plan to plan the health protocols. They plan to plan the health protocols. They plan to plan the health But uh, mayor, the, the mayor of Baguio will assist the health protocols so that they can now shift to antigen testing. We will be looking at a cheaper travel in the coming days. And also one of the good news is that the Rhythm Promotions Board will now subsidize the cost of RT-PCR testing, which is a yay. We will just wait for the finality of the LNA release, but they're working already on it. It was announced uh, like, like three days ago during the previous task force. Right. Yeah, so looking forward to that, I'm looking at 50% of the subsidy. We have 50% of the subsidy that is just already a big chunk. Okay, so we do. Then I think we have our age shift with the original capacity. Okay, I'm currently here in, in Vigan. Again, in the ass over here, uh, I was spent by the RDPC art testing in Manila. And then, when I went to the border to Oregon, ako yung, alam nyo, ako yung nag-election sa ito about this, pero nakagamutan nyo ng magaan ng death testing. My God. So, I, I spent a lot of work just with testing. Wala. Nandito na. Hindi ako pwede mag-back up. I do everything. Yeah, this is my first trip after those, after so many months. It's so nice to get out of my home. So there you go. Uh, for those who are in Metro Manila, makapagawin kayo over as a mega mall this weekend. Extend invitation of the association with the Philippine Travel Mart in as a mega mall mega trip. All right, so that ends the session this morning. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, it's great to see you again. It's great to see you again. And I hope to see you all tomorrow for the British Airways product update. Links have been sent already if you have not received email. And